I'm in Invermere, BC, and behind me there's a 100-year-old swale. In this video, we're going to go take a look at it, see how it's performing, and see if we can get some design directives from it. Behind me, to an untrained eye, you might not actually see what's going on here. There's actually a flume that has been there for close to 100 years. And a flume is very similar to a swale, except that it's slightly off contour. However, this flume in particular is full of debris, and so it's been acting like a swale for close to 100 years. These flumes were dug by a European who came over here to try and turn this valley into the Okanagan, or a fruit growing region, of the future, to try and attract other immigrants to come out here. I'm gonna walk up the hill and we're gonna go take a look at this flume. Okay, so I just walked up the hill there. I'm standing inside of the flume right now. And what's really interesting when you get up here is you start to see the effect that it's having on the landscape. So just look behind me there for a second. There's not much growing on that hill there. Pretty dry, it's southwest facing, so it gets pretty hot in the summertime. The grass density is pretty low. Here's an example of what the slope looks like without the influence of the swale. Notice how far apart the clumps of grass are, how much soil is exposed. You can really get a sense of how dry this slope typically is. But then if we just come above the flume here, you start to see something really interesting. There's trees growing on contour. Let's go below the flume now, take a peek. You can see now that the, it's very clear that these trees are all growing on a line on this side too. There's a whole bunch of trees down there. So now let's go take a look inside the flume and try and understand what's going on. If we look upslope, it looks quite green. We're in the wet season right now, but it's not as green as when we get down here in the actual flume itself. Not a big flume. In fact, it's been filled in over time through plant growth and erosion coming off the slope. Let's put our hands in here and see what we can find. Lots of moss. So out here, we don't really see moss growing on this type of a slope. It's pretty dry, southwest facing, it gets really dry in the summer. So that's already an indication that we have a higher than normal humidity. We get our hands in here now. We got fungi going on in there. There's some mycelium. See if I can get it in focus. There we go. And clearly very, very moist. Now if I go to just a little bit up slope of this, we try and dig up here, right away we start seeing lichen. Very little moss up here. I'm gonna try digging in it. And the soil is quite, quite dry. It's a little bit of moisture, but not like what we have in that flume there. So the flume is really doing its job. It's harvesting water. There's another shot of those trees that are on, on contour. What I really find interesting about this flume is that it was placed here to convey water from one place to another for irrigation purposes. These fir trees were never planted consciously. They just volunteered here because of a higher than normal water um, concentration in the soil that was uh, facilitated by these actual flumes. I think these elements are really interesting because we can learn a lot about how they might respond in over long periods of time. So whenever you see an element like this, pull over and observe it and report it to the rest of the community. We have lots to be able to learn from, from things like this.